Hello and welcome to my channel, AB Make It Artwork, where we do what we do to make that artwork for you. And in today's video, you will be watching me draw clothing on these male models. I made these models beforehand because I figured that would make the video a bit too long. But in today's video, I want to kind of talk about the importance of using references and how to sort of properly use references. Now, it's been stated in the artist community that a good artist knows how to copy and a great artist knows how to steal. And this was said by likely Pablo Picasso. If you go to look up the quote, it's kind of harder to identify who first came up with a saying. But what this saying means is that when you're first learning to draw, you imitate what you see. And although imitation may be flattering, completely copying a resource isn't okay. And you may see different videos on why some artists will not do fan art, why sometimes art theft or plagiarism occurs, and this is when you copy pretty much line for line, color for color, an image or a character. And sometimes this doesn't even have to be exactly like the character. You could just be taking the character, the idea of the character and its characteristics, and although it's not yours, claiming it as your own, that falls into plagiarism and copyright. Now, making those kind of images for personal use is fine. A lot of the ways in which artists will learn how to draw is through observation and mimicry of other artists. For instance, if you go into an art classroom, they will teach you how to paint like the classics or the old masters. And no one would tell you that you're plagiarizing a painter by following his techniques or her techniques. It's just a means of imitation until you finally learn how to do it for yourself. So copying art as a form of self-learning is not bad. Copying art to claim it then as your own and get popularity and money to gain from it is not quite as okay. It's generally frowned upon in the artist community and legally will get you in trouble. Um, so what's the right way to use references? So in regards to stealing, we're not actually saying completely take what someone else has done and recreate everything they've done. No, when we, when artist community and artists talk about stealing, they mean take little bits, kind of like at a buffet. When you're an artist, you have to take your references like it's a buffet and maybe it's one of those crazy buffets where you've got mac and cheese, but you, you've also got like garlic bread and for some reason there's chocolate cake and a cheese fountain? Like, what even? So you've got your little bits and pieces. Maybe you've got some hot wings. you got some salad because you're trying to watch your, watch your weight just a little bit. But we can also take this into account with how to use references properly and take little bits from different photos. For instance, the poses... Sorry for my hat, I didn't realize it was in frame until now. Good thing it's not covering the drawing. <laughs> for the poses, I used a book produced by Impact. It is called People in Poses, a comic artist's photo reference. And I used that book and two of the male models and several other different poses to figure out how I wanted to draw the males and get some organic shapes for how the stances would be. I then used Pinterest and went through my folder of clothing inspirations and looked at some of the more 
masculine outfits or outfits more catered towards being worn by men. And I looked through those reference and my clothing references and inspiration board and then drew the outfits from those references. Now, when you see the outcome, you can see that the end result is not the components of the parts, like the individual parts. It's, well, it is a component of the different parts. You see that the end result does not completely mimic the sources that you found or the sources that I used. It became a new thing. And with using resources, like I said, you got to take bits from your art salad bar, take from many different resources in order to come up with a, a piece or a character design. This is really great for character design, something that I've really been into, which is my, my weekly obsession, has been clothing haul videos and these last couple of days, uh, wardrobe capsules photos on Pinterest. And if you've ever wondered why I also share a link to my Pinterest, it's so you guys can see the resources that I collect. And if you feel like you're lacking inspiration, you can look at what boards I have for references and maybe that'll inspire you with maybe, yes, this is the right outfit that I need for a character. Or, oh yeah, that's the, that's the exact pose of a horse that I needed. So majestic, now I can finish my unicorn or Pegasus piece. And some people get this, this concept that using references is bad sometimes. And I know a lot of artists in the artist community will try to dissuade that thinking because references are not bad. Completely copying a reference though can be problematic. But like I said, pick and choose from your art salad bar of references, get your hot wings, get your chocolate cake, get that donut, make sure to pick up a salad because you know you need some fiber after all this stuff. But in the end, just picking and choosing little bits is what will help you to create something that's yours. Now, I want to also share some resources for in case you're looking to find people who go more in depth as far as clothing design goes and some of the artists who go more so in anatomy. Uh, Cynix Designs, he's a great U YouTuber who goes into in depth small tutorials on how to draw different parts of the body. Um, for instance, one of his recent videos was on noses. Zoe Hong. She is a fashion designer. She works in the fashion industry and she does a lot of tutorials on fabrics, how to draw fabrics, how to create uh, model croquis, which I recently found out that croquis means sketch. And she even has different methods of which to achieve fabrics. Some other people, uh, Mikey Mega Mega, he does, he does some tutorials on how to draw the body and whatnot. If <laughs> I'm trying to think of some others because I know that there are others and I happen to have them in my, in my subscribe, subscribe to. So, you know, if I don't list someone in this, uh, you can look through the people that I'm subscribed to, find which artists that I'm subscribed to, and see what they're up to. I know there's one artist that has a concept boot camp, and he goes very into depth on how to do anatomy, how to do concept work, and recently he's talking about using shapes to define traits for a character design. His name is Keenan Lafferty. I couldn't remember for a second, so I had to look it up. Uh, he has things like concept 
art boot camp for weapons, bodies. He goes over everything. And honestly, there are so many artists that do tutorials that they are all a great resource that if you want to mimic what they teach you, that is a step to learning how to do it for yourself and a future resource for when you go to make your own. So if you want to share some love, maybe give me some thumbs up, give me some feedback with any comments, questions, or suggestions. Right now I'm showing you the books that I had. This is the People in Poses books. You can see some of the poses. And in this book there are four different models. Another book that I will recommend, especially if you're into the manga or shoujo art style, is Shoujo Fashion Manga Art School Boys. Because I know personally I have a hard time with drawing males and doing these kind of tutorials really helps me. So I hope you have a wonderful day and that you always remember to do what you do to make that artwork for you. Bye.